the order of operations. So an operation is just some kind of procedure that you can do with numbers. So what can you do with numbers? Well, you can add numbers, you can subtract them, multiply, divide. These are all considered operations, just some procedure that you can do with numbers. So what does the order of operations tell us? It tells us when you have a problem, with more than one operation, which should you focus on first? Which should you tackle first? And then second, and third, etc. So if you have a problem and you have some addition going on, some multiplication, a few different operations, the order of operation tells you what you should focus on first, and then second, and third. It's just a guideline to help you work through a problem. So what is this order of operations? So there's this helpful acronym. It is P-E-M D A S. And the P here stands for parentheses. Oftentimes, we'll have some math that's contained in parentheses. And the order of operation tells us the first thing you want to do is figure out any math that's going on in parentheses. And once you've done that, you focus on exponents. As we've learned, you can have something like x to the second power. It's also called x squared. And the order of operation says, once you've done the math in parentheses, do the math with exponents. Once you're done with that, you move on to multiplication. Remember, we use a dot to represent multiplication. Next on our, in our order is division. And our last two in our order is addition and subtraction. So this is the order of operations. You start at the top with parentheses and you work down the list. If you have multiple operations going on in a problem, this is your guideline. You want to start at parentheses, move on to exponents, then do the multiplication division, and then addition subtraction. So if this is a lot, if this is a little confusing right now, don't worry. Uh, we're going to do some examples and they will all make sense. So first of all, um, this is the order. And how can you remember this order? Well, you can Remember it as these blue letters, this PEMDIS. That's one way of remembering. Um, and But there's another more common way of remembering it. And that is a little phrase that goes like this. Please excuse my dear aunt Sally. And if you notice, the first letter here in each word spells out our PEMDAS, P-E-M-D-A-S. So either one works. You can remember it as PEMDAS or please excuse my dear aunt Sally, but you're gonna wanna write down this acronym and anytime you see a problem with multiple operations going on, and it can help you to work through the problem step by step. And as we'll see in our first example, it is very useful.
evaluate the expression when x equals 2. And our expression is negative 6x squared plus 11. Now remember, the word evaluate here is just a fancy word that math folks like to use. Um, just means solve. Oftentimes the problem's simpler than you think. You just have to translate all the complex fancy words into simple words. So we just want to solve the expression when x equals 2. And as we notice, there are a few operations going on, a few procedures. So we're adding some numbers. We have that plus sign. We have an exponent right here. Uh, do you notice anything else? We have some multiplication right there. Remember, if we have a number right next to a variable, we don't need to have that multiplication sign. We can just squeeze them together. So instead of writing negative 6 times x squared, we can just write it negative 6 x squared. Just makes it a little more concise. So we have a few operations going on. So that means we need to write down our PEMDIS, our please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Now let's mark off the operations that we see here. So we notice that big addition sign there. Then we saw that x squared, that exponent. And then finally, we figured out that negative 6 times x squared. That mul that's a multiplication operation. So there's three procedures going on. And when we write out our acronym like this, you remem remember to always go left to right. So we start here with parentheses and you move left to right. Uh, but we don't have any parentheses here, so we would start with exponents. Before we get going on this, there's actually a way we can make our problem a little simpler. And how is that? You see right here we have negative 6 times x squared. And remember, x is just a variable, and a variable is just a number in disguise. But is it really in disguise? It looks like our problem tells us that x equals 2. We know it's behind the mask. We know what x is. So let's just go ahead and substitute that in. Make our problem a little simpler. So we have negative 6 times, and we'll replace that x with a 2. And we made the problem a little simpler. We didn't don't need to keep that x in there since we know what it is. All right. So let's get started with our order of operations then. So the first on our list would be e for exponents. So we underline the part that is with exponents, which is this 2 to the second power, or 2 squared. Let's make a note of that. exponents. So with the order of operations, we only focus on one step at a time. So the part in pink, underline in pink, that's all we focus on. Everything else stays the same. So we have negative 6 times 2 to the second power is 2 multiplied twice. So 2 times 2 would be 4. Everything else, this negative 6 and 11, that just stays the same. And so now we're done with our exponent piece. Next on our list would be m for multiplication. So we'll underline our multiplication piece. And that is the piece we'll focus on. So negative 6 times 4 is negative 24. That plus 11 just stays the same. So let's check off our m. And finally, we have A for addition. That's all we have here. So negative 24 plus 11 is negative 13. And that is our 
answer. Let's check that off the list. Okay, we've used our PEMDAS to step through the problem. We took it one step at a time, focusing only on what's in pink, and we evaluated the expression. We solved our expression. So now that we've done that, now that we've learned our order of operations and worked through a problem, let's ask an important question. What's the point? What's the point of the order of operations? Well, the point is the order of operations was made by a bunch of fancy math folks. Think long beards. And these long bearded math folks made the order of operations. So we all end up with the same answer. So as you see in our problem here, we took it step by step with exponents and then multiplication and then addition. We followed an order. If we followed a different order, say we did multiplication first and then exponents and then addition, we get a different answer. So the, the point of this order of operations, the purpose is giving everyone a guideline. So everyone follows this order and we all end up with this negative 13. So anyone who gets this problem, this negative 6x squared plus 11, they would follow this order of operations and end up with negative 13. So it's kind of a rule book that these long-bearded math folks came up with. And let's go ahead and do another example just to get this concept a little stronger. Evaluate, there's that fun word again, the expression 9 divided by the quantity 7 minus 4 squared plus 8. OK, let's go ahead and mark our operations. There's a lot going on here. So we see a division sign, a big division sign. There's some parentheses that pop out there. Um, subtraction, minus sign there. We see an exponent, an addition sign, so a lot, of, a lot of operations going on here. So when we see more than one operation, what do we do? We write out our PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And let's mark what we saw in here. We saw that big division sign. We saw some parentheses, some subtraction, an exponent there and a big addition sign. So it looks like we have all the operations except for multiplication. So again, we're going to take this one step at a time. First on our list is P for parentheses. So we do the math that's in parentheses. So we have everything else stays the same. So we'll have 9 divided by and we saw what's in parentheses. 7 minus 4 is 3. And the point of parentheses is to just kind of group, group some math together. And once you solve what's inside, you can kind of get rid of them now. We see our, we have our 3. Um, there's no need to leave it in parentheses. And we can kind of clean up the math now and just have 3 by itself plus 8. All right, so that 7 minus 4 becomes 3. OK, so we're done with our parentheses step. Now we're on to exponents. And where is that? Well, we have our 3 squared here. 
Okay, so we're going to focus on just that piece. So we'll have 9 divided by, so 3 squared is 3 times 3. That is 9. And we're done with that piece. Next on our list is D for division. Let's underline that piece. And so we'll focus 9 divided by 9 will be 1. And then we'll put our plus 8 on the side. So as you can see, this order of operations, this little guideline we have here on the right, it really helps you just step through the problem. So next we have addition. So that is here, 1 plus 8. So 1 plus 8 would be 9. So our answer is 9. But it looks like we missed something, didn't we? We still have an S here left over. We didn't mark that off. So let's see what happened. Well, if you notice, when we did our parentheses piece, we did some subtraction. So our subtraction was within parentheses. So when we did this first step here, we got that subtraction piece done. So it's kind of a two for one. So now we are confident. Now that we know where our subtraction was, it was done in that first step, we can be confident that our answer, 9, is correct. So when you're working through these problems, you see a few operations, write down your PEMDAS and use it to guide you through the problem. And if it helps to underline, as I've done here in pink, I've underlined each step, do that. If, if, if that helps you, go ahead and underline. And I'd encourage you to get some erasable colored pencils, and then you can do your math in colors just like I am. And I think doing math in colors and writing off little notes like this to the side, it can make math a little easier to learn and more enjoyable. So I encourage you to add some color and just imagine having a notebook filled with colorful notes. It'll make it a little more fun. So. Enjoy.